Despite a surprise appearance from Boston Bruins defenseman Charlie McAvoy, the Bruins were not able to beat Carolina in Game 5 at the Hurricanes home rink. They now face elimination, heading home to play Game 6. Oh boy, let's talk about that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Wednesday, May 11th, and I want to apologize for the depressing sounding intro. My wife called me out for sounding a bit down, but that's just how it is. After losing Game 5 last night in a very uninspiring fashion, uh, shouldn't take it on ourselves. Shouldn't allow hockey to dictate our general well-being, but such is life during the Stanley Cup playoffs. Before we get into Game 5, I do want to thank you for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast, free and available on all platforms as well as on YouTube, so please do hit that subscribe button. Each new episode will be automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, enjoy, shake your fist at... Uh, if you can follow along on Twitter as well, that would be greatly appreciated, at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, at Ian C. McLaren. I am a lifelong Bruins fan. Been covering this team for various outlets for about 17 years. Seen the highs, seen the lows, and here we are once again facing early elimination from the Stanley Cup playoffs. Very disappointing result last night as the Bruins lost, uh, what even was the final score? 5-1 to the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, And they now face elimination, heading back to play game six on home ice. Came into this game feeling pretty good after games three and four. And there was a huge boost just, you know, an hour or two before Game 5 as it was announced. uh, First caught by Matt Porter of the Boston Globe, who saw Charlie McAvoy uh, arriving at the rink. Emily Kaplan of ESPN then reported that Charlie McAvoy had cleared COVID-19 protocols and was flown by the Bruins to Raleigh on a private jet in time for uh, game game five. Uh, Bruce Cassidy said, um, yeah, he got on that private plane. It was cleared prior to game five. Uh, they were planning on playing without him. Obviously a nice surprise. Uh, to see him back, uh, and obviously from missing a game, from missing a practice, he wasn't necessarily 100%, but he gave what he could, and he should be better in Game 6. Uh, McAvoy declined to answer questions about the logistics surrounding his COVID-19 protocol. He did say he experienced symptoms. Uh, after the game, he said he got sick, went through it, made it out the other side, and here we are, tried to show up and put his best foot forward, tried to give it everything he had, a little tired, but just working through it, uh, look forward to feeling better every day. You know, as you know, I've been through this as well recently, I can attest to the fact that every day still, you know, mid-afternoon, hit a wall, get really tired, 
Uh, so I can't imagine being in his position and then going out and playing 25 minutes of playoff hockey. Uh, and hopefully he rests up and is even better in game six. He did have four hits, three blocks, two shots on goal in the loss for the Boston Bruins. And, I mean, what can you say about this game? It was kind of the same script that we saw in games one and two. Maybe the Bruins didn't come out as uh, dominant early on as they did in those two games. They did get a bunch of shots on goal. They had a couple glorious scoring opportunities, one by Brad Marchand, who found himself all alone in front of Antti Ranta. Uh, put a pretty nice move, went backhand, gloved down by Ranta for the stop. Uh, a little later in the first, Chris Wagner breaking out the toe drag getting a pretty good scoring opportunity that Ranta was able to stop. The only Bruin who was able to solve Ranta on the night was Connor Clifton. That was in the third period when the game was already well in hand. Um, just a pretty, yeah, disappointing night. And some pretty bad puck luck for the Boston Bruins altogether. You know, uh, Bruce Cassidy said that he was comfortable with Swayman's game, Jeremy Swayman's game last night. He thought the netminer dealt with some tough puck luck in Game 5. A deflection on Carolina's second goal, midway through the first. Uh, an own goal on the Hurricanes' third goal, off a Brandon Carlo clearing attempt that ricocheted off Jake DeBrusque. Uh, the first goal I thought he could have had or should have had, Kind of squeaked through, barely crossed the line. And um, the first one, again, of that, Cassidy said, that's what he's been talking about in terms of those timely saves. Uh, they got a few early on. The Bruins needed that one. Uh, and while well, he did give them a chance after that, you know, after that second goal, it was pretty much all done. Uh, there was a stretch where the Bruins weren't very good in front of Jeremy Swayman. Mismanaged some pucks. Uh, he did make some big saves to give the Bruins a chance to stay in it. Uh, so like games 1 and 2, he's not putting this loss Swayman. They need to finish a bit better uh, when they get opportunities early. Still an issue. But, having said all that, Cassidy would not confirm whether or not Jeremy Swayman would be the goalie for Game 6 on Thursday. He and the coaches are going to discuss that further. Um, I don't believe he made four straight starts at any point this season. Game 6 would be his fourth. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do go back to Linus Allmark for Game 6. We'll talk about more Game 5, about Game 5 here in a moment. But first, a quick word about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. You can save time and money by visiting rockauto.com. They're a family-owned business, and they've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are always reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you could possibly need, from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, new carpet, even new gas caps. Go explore their easy-to-use website today. Find the solution for your auto part needs. That's at rockauto.com. You can see all the parts available for your car or truck or minivan right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your vehicle will ever need at rockauto.com. Dot com. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. 
Uh, so the Bruins, like I said, they once again came out with a solid start over the first few minutes. But for the fifth game this series, they surrendered the opening goal uh, off that Jacob Slavin shot that just trickled over the line. Tony D'Angelo doubled the lead with a power play goal with about 7.43 remaining in the opening frame. And uh, that was pretty much all they needed. Seth Jarvis did score two goals to up the lead to 4 nothing at one point. Maybe not so fun fact. Seth Jarvis was drafted by the Hurricanes with the selection they uh, acquired from the Toronto Maple Leafs for taking on the Patrick Marlowe contract. Patrick Marlowe yesterday announced his retirement from the NHL, and uh, Jarvis went out and scored those two goals. Bruce Cassidy, after the game, said what concerned him or bothered him was the fact that the Bruins were facing elimination and that was the effort that they brought. Um, the Bergeron line had a number of good chances early on. Uh, three times in this building, he said they were the better team over the first five, six, seven minutes. And then they had one chance, it found its way in, and that gave them a lot of juice. So that was um, certainly, if there's a game seven, that's something hopefully they can, a trend they can buck, so to speak. Um, up and down the lineup, they're going to need a little bit more, whether it's working hard to keep the puck out of the net, which they did in Boston. Uh, they were a lot better at home blocking shots, finishing checks. Uh, sorting out coverage quicker than they have on the road. The first goal shouldn't happen if they're on their toes defensively as well, Cassidy said. Uh, need to guys get some guys going. It's that time of year where that inner drive comes through, and that's what they're looking for. You know, apart from Boston's big three, of Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak. And, you know, I'd even say Pasternak perhaps hasn't performed up to his expected level. It's been a bit of a no-man's land in terms of production. Marchand leads the way with three goals, six assists, held pointless uh, last night. Bergeron, three goals, three assists for six points in those five games. Uh, David Pasternak, four points through five games, as does Charlie Coyle. But there's a lot of guys who really need to step up. I expected or was hoping for a big game from Taylor Hall last night. He stuck on two goals, one assist. I don't know if you're big on plus minus. I'm not especially, but he's a minus seven in the series. Uh, only has 11 shots through five games. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, he came into the playoffs on a pretty good roll. He's only got one goal, two assists. Uh, Eric Howla, two points. And then you have a few guys who are stuck on zero points for the series. A lot of these guys in the bottom six. Craig Smith, has been largely invisible. Nick Foligno. Curtis Lazar, I've liked his game, but he only has four shots, zero points through five games. Thomas Nosek, he's been up and down the lineup, getting some time on the second line even, zero points. Matt Grizzlick, zero points. Um, then you have guys who have played fewer games, like Riley, Chris Wagner, Zero points. Um, that's a problem. The Bruins, once again, incredibly top-heavy. And on the road, 
Uh, you know, the home team gets to dictate the matchups. They're able to get the Jordan Stahl line out there against Bergeron. Bergeron was dominated in face-offs last night. And the Stahl line was able to keep those guys quiet with nobody else going. It was a pretty, I don't want to say easy win for the Hurricanes, but the Bruins didn't put up near enough of a fight. Marchand admitted it's a tough building to play in. They feed a lot on the emotion that they get from the crowd. Um, feeding off the energy. And they have pretty good matchups at home. That all plays a part in it. They are a good team. You can't discredit them. This isn't an upset in the making. Uh, they're very talented. They play extremely hard. They're fast. The Bruins knew it was going to be a tough series. They're competing hard out there. Got to give them some credit, Brad Marchand said. On home ice, the Bruins have outscored Carolina 9-4. And that's obviously a trend they hope continues tomorrow night. So far, it's been a homer series, Cassidy said. The Garden has been good to the Bruins. He thinks their guys will be motivated, hopefully, obviously. Uh, and... In order for the series to be won by the Bruins, they had to win at least one game on the road. The next opportunity will be Game 7 if, in fact, the homer trend continues in this series. But that's not that's not at all guaranteed. And, and some of these bottom six guys really need to step up. Even, I'd argue, the bottom nine. <laughs> you know, uh... Bruce Cassidy put the lines in a, a blender. I don't know if that's affecting things, just a lack of consistency, a lack of chemistry. Pasternak was out there double shifting. Could we see some changes to the lineup? Trent Frederick come back perhaps. I wouldn't mind seeing him back in there for Thomas Nosek or maybe Anton Bleed coming in. I, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing Mark McLaughlin come in or uh, Oscar Steen. You know, guys who are able to put the puck in the net. Um, Chris Wagner, he's been okay. Uh, I don't think he should be glued into the lineup necessarily. So there could be some changes to the forward uh, lineup. The Bruins aren't practicing today, so we won't get a, a look at who might be in until tomorrow morning. But definitely some food for thought for Bruce Cassidy and the coaching staff. Hampus Lindholm was a possibility for Game 5 after skating with the team on Monday. He didn't make the trip. Wasn't cleared by doctors. Hopefully that extra couple days of rest will give him a chance to get back in there uh, to give the Bruins a full compliment. But, you know, altogether, very disappointing result. I know a lot of us watching, tweeting, the frustration was evident. Uh, but it's not over. The Bruins have played very well at home and um, wouldn't be the first time that they erase a 3-2 series lead and go on, but it certainly will not be easy having to go back to Raleigh for a possible uh, Game 7. Maybe Bilt Bar is the answer for the Boston Bruins. Uh, they're the perfect snack to take with you on the road. Maybe that's the missing key for them down in Carolina. Uh, these are healthy and delicious protein bars. You don't have to sacrifice a good tasting snack for your health. You can have the best of both. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. They have so many delicious flavors. You're going to want to try a mixed box. comes with 12 flavors. And you can add in some of their puff bars as well, which are marshmallow-infused protein bars. So many delicious flavors. What's amazing about Built Bar is they make it great tasting first, and then figure out how to make it healthy, which they do. Compared to a candy bar, the stats on a Built Bar are unbelievable. Uh, you know, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 
17 grams of protein. You can go to build.com right now, check out all the available bars, put together a mixed box, and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Elsewhere around the NHL last night, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs or the Boston Bruins rivals had a good night. Let's just say that. The Toronto Maple Leafs overcame a 2-0 deficit to beat the Tampa Bay Lightning to take a 3-2 lead in their series. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens won the NHL draft lottery, so they will have an opportunity to select first overall, likely Shane Wright from the OHL's Kingston Frontenacs. Uh, the Blues won their game against the Wild. The Kings won their game against the Edmonton Oilers. And I think right now I am only picking, I think, one correct series or actually no that i picked florida to beat washington that's tied 2-2 they go tonight i picked calgary to beat dallas that's 2-2 game five goes tonight but i picked the rangers they could be eliminated tonight i picked the oilers they're down in their series same with the wild same with the lightning same with the bruins so uh pretty good pretty good uh picks from oh, from your boy i did pick the the avalanche and they have already uh, moved on after sweeping the um, Nashville Predators. I mentioned Patrick Marlowe retired. He was, of course, picked second overall in 1997. First overall that year, Joe Thornton. Uh, one reason why I would like the Panthers to do well is for him to get a cup uh, before he retires. Uh, what else is going on around the NHL? I think that is uh, pretty much it. Bruins, losers last night. Hopefully they're able to shake that off, come back, and win game six, which we will preview here tomorrow on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Quick show recommendation to end, as per usual. If you haven't been watching We Own This City on HBO Max, a very fantastic show from the producers of The Wire, uh, very reminiscent of The Wire, uh, but John Bernthal, so good in this series, one of my favorites, and uh, I highly recommend that if you are not on top of it yet. Uh, very excited for the return of Hacks tomorrow night as well, which is a very uh, hilarious and very good show on HBO Max as well. S show not sponsored by HBO Max, but there's some good stuff on there. Actually, speaking of that, I just rewatched uh, Crashing, Pete Holmes' show, and um, if you need a boost today, I, I recommend checking that out. It's a good, positive show. Anyways, that's it for today's episode, friends. I hope you're all having a good week. Uh, let's press on here together on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.